<laughs> oh my god hi again i don't know what's happening i don't know if it's because it's a brand new year i don't know what is going on today but my phone is acting cray 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 and i'm with felipe i don't know what's happening today guys i'm so sorry about that but i'm back on we're gonna see what happened hey kate i'm having such issues today with my connection and my phone so i'm gonna try to bring back felipe again hey delmar welcome back to my show i don't know what's going on so if we keep having technical difficulties i may have to reschedule felipe because he deserves a great show and he deserves a clean show <laughs> this is crazy <laughs> so i'm gonna try to bring felipe back in because we have to okay let me try this again i'm so sorry all right let's see what happens this is not great <laughs> i don't know what's going on all right so anyway, I don't know what is happening. I am so sorry. I know it's gotta be your Wi-Fi. So you know, let's get into the crust of why of what we're doing. So happy, happy second season. Happy second season for Thank you. you. So much. You. Oh, I know, I know. Um, you know, and um, I mean, there's lots of news. I mean, I ended the year in a in a big way. It was quite the surprise with the uh, induction. Yes. Tell us about that. So I wanted to get to that. So YMCA, right, was inducted into the Grammy Hall of Fame? Well, I don't know if it was the song. I know that Linda Ronstadt and uh, uh, what was that Quest by, I forget the group called Quest for something. Mm -hmm. uh, like a five, like five or six groups and Village People was uh, received one. Is, it will be inducted, but I understand yeah. how the... So I understand now the Grammys are not going to happen. No, the, they're not. The date was moved yeah. for March, and they chose March 14th, mm -hmm. but March 14th is also the uh, Screen Actors Guild Award, and I'm part of Screen Actors Guild after. So that's kind of strange that they would, you know, I don't know now if it's going to be canceled indefinitely, but, I, you know, I think that having two award shows, you would think that all these people know each other. Right. And, and they would know, let's like reschedule here. I think that the uh, American Music Awards did a great job of doing virtual performances mm -hmm. and then some live. Yeah. Um, and I think it was Kelly Clarkson that hosted, right? Or something. I believe like, so. Oh, a Tribe Called Quest. Thank you, Delmar. A Tribe Called Quest. Who wrote yeah. that? Someone wrote that? Yes, Delmar Brown. Fabulous. Oh, hello there. Hello, and happy, happy New Year, everyone. And so, yeah, I'm actually looking at my American Music Award over there in the cabinet, <laughs> the Dusty Cabinet. I turned the light on to that bad boy, and there are oh. other, there are several other awards prestigious in there, yeah. and I didn't have to turn the light on because I have to do some major dusting. <laughs> so, well, wait, before, before we get too deep into the conversation, because when we, you and I talked earlier, um, you said you definitely wanted to take a moment to just acknowledge the people that have been, first of all, affected by, by COVID-19 and also by the events of this week. So we just want to take a moment to honor those people and pray for those people and pray for their families and their healing in our country and our world. Yes. Thank you for that. Yes, um, and I lost quite a few friends. I mean, more than than I realized. Um, a total of friends, colleagues, neighbor, uh, neighbor, uh, uh, people I know, we, and and then very close uh, to the tune of like seventeen people. Wow! And, then I, and I lost my producer in August of mm -hmm. cancer, um, and um, so it was quite the year. And then this week with what just happened, I believe it was Wednesday, mm -hmm. um, because now when we really think about it, the Georgia election seems now so far away from when this thing happened, right? Yes, but we're wearing our blue. We're wearing our blue, and then sadly now someone else passed from that, and that's just tragic, and I think that, you know, we as a country and we as artists and just all of us, we need to just come together and just really push back that negativity, that darkness, yes. and just step into the light and enjoy what we have, because Absolutely. it's a blessing. It's a blessing. It is. It really is a blessing. Even I was talking with some colleagues 
and friends this week because I went back to my well, my remote office on Monday. And it was kind of, I had a nice two week break at the end of the year and I was like, oh, but then I was like, girl, uh uh, step out of it. You are so right. Happy. Be grateful. You got more work to do. And here we are. So just saying, of course, you know, not not discounting my feelings and my fatigue and all the other stuff, but I'm so grateful that I, again I have a job to return to and continue creating the art that I, I've been afforded the, the platform to do. So, but speaking of Wednesday, yes, that was an awful day in our nation's history. And, but it was also the birthday of Kathy Sledge. So yeah. speak, speaking of birthdays, your birthday is coming up on Tuesday. Oh, Kathy's a Capricorn as well? She is. Wow, I've worked with her also. Capricorns. She's lovely. She's lovely. Yeah, I've got a, I've got another big one. I'm blessed to, to, to come up with a, another one on Tuesday. The uh, the big six seven. Yes. And uh, you know, again, it's just I'm blessed to just be to, to be going into it, and, and it's not like I want anything more than health and happiness. Because if you yes. got that, you have everything. You're rich. Yes. Absolutely. Hey, Breakbeat Lou. Oh my God, it's such a great crowd today. So we Hello, have... everybody. <laughs> Felipe Happy Rose. Friday. Thank God. No, I, yeah, I said that earlier to you, and I said it on a video when I posted and I said, thank God it's Friday, and I meant that from this week. Like, thank God we take <laughs> it out of this week. You know? Yes. So happy early birthday to you, Felipe. Thank I'm sure you. We're talking. And um, so the purpose of today's show we both of us are dancers first, singers later in our careers, but singer and dancers. And we were talking about doing this show in honor of well, number one, we lost an amazing artist uh, last month, I guess, Anne Ranking, beautiful, incredible actress, dancer, triple threat, singer, jazz diva, Bob Fosse, yeah. albums, all that jazz. I mean, just so Chicago theater. Broadway Divine, Tony Award winning, all of the above. And so our show today, because Felipe was also part of what is now a cult classic film, Can't Stop the Music. And so before we get into all the films, just because we didn't, weren't able to save our previous interview, can you just explain to the kids how you came into dance originally? Uh, I, um, well, dancing came through my mother and right. my, Puerto Rican, my Puerto Rican mother. And she, when she left Puerto Rico, when she was seven years old, she left by boat. She grew up in New York. She ran the streets with her homegirls, Italian and Black and Jewish sisters. And, yes. she went, and in high school, she started cutting class. And she went, would go off to dance uh, and party at the Copacabana, where she then auditioned. That's how she actually met my father, mm. who, uh, as a Native American, was relocated by trade. And she told me that he came down on a steel girder when she was on her way to her audition okay. at the original Copacabana. Yeah. So, so growing up, I had the lights, and she did get her job, and she had her billboard in Times Square where she uh, it was Miss Schaefer for the month. I think it was July or something. That was a beer that that's no longer around. But I do remember as a as a small baby that my mother had like everybody would just come after the club. With our friend Olga San Juan was a very close friend of Carmen Miranda. Mm -hmm. And the likes of people like Mongo Santa Maria and Bobby Capo and uh, the jazz, um, uh, Miles J, you know, all these amazing artists and dancers, they would come and party at the house. Mm -hmm. And of course, I'm like, what, four years old, three, four years old hiding under the table in the living room and leaning up like this and grabbing the cocktail. And <laughs> there were many times they found me passed out under a under, oh, under no. the table. But my mother partied, she, you know, and so I grew up with, with the, the love of dance and music, you know, as a child. And then I, after high school, I was really, okay, am I going to go to, I went to a two-year business school and and I said, this is not who I am. This is, I want to be in the arts. And I, I told my mother what I wanted to do. And she was like, no, 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 you need, you need a real job. That's not a real job. And then she was disgruntled, uh, disgruntled by the fact that her mother, uh, Pentecostal mother, grandmother, my grandmother, 
talked her out of continuing her dance career. Mm. So she felt that for me, she didn't want me to be let down in th with life if things didn't go the way I want. But you know, you when you've got your that dream and you have that hope in your heart and it's alive, you know, you have to go with it because you know, you if you if you let the opportunity go by and escape and go away, you'll never be able to catch that star and put it yes. in your pocket. So I went and I auditioned, started taking dance classes, and I auditioned uh, in New York for the uh, uh, Pachal Guzman uh, Downtown Ballet. Uh, it was the second chapter of the Puerto Rico Ballet. Mm -hmm. And so I stayed. I got a scholarship. For me, I thought, and you know well, scholarships, you know, you think, oh, my God, it's, you know, I made it. But it's not really, you know, you just get free classes, and then you get to push a broom to clean the uh, the school and all that. But yeah. I, I stayed with them for four years and ended up um, the year before I left working in, in, a, in a performance of a uh, choreographed by Pashal Guzman. I don't even know if he's even alive. Or, you know, mm -hmm. but he uh, casted me in, in the ballet um, of the late Puerto Rican uh, poetess, Julia Burgos. Mm -hmm. And I'm not forget what, 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 the, what, the, what the piece was called, the ballet. But I was the self de uh, desire for self destruction, and we played at Alice Tully Hall for yes. four nights. Four nights, I got a cute mention in the New York Post, and I thought, "Oh my God, okay, this I really like." And so I stayed with it. And after I left in January, in, in January of nineteen seventy seven, a month later, started dancing in a club in New York City, uh, uh, like a late night backroom club where they only had dancers and there were all the activities going on. As yeah. a dancer, you could not you can't you could not take part in any of those activities, but you were hired just so they could look up at so I was mm -hmm. half naked with my loincloth and my long hair and moccasins and bells and they just never saw anything like that. I would just appear like an apparition. And a month later I met the producer of uh, Jacques Morali. Right. And then he told me this crazy concept about a group that he wanted to put together because he had the Richard family. And yeah. so I just thought that, you know, he's either drunk or on drugs or he wants to pick me up. And yes. I, at, at, at 20, 21, you know, I was all that. Okay. You know, yes, you I, right. You're not going to just tell me that you're going to do A, B, C, and D. So <laughs> he kept, I was, he would see me at different clubs. And right. back then when, when we as dancers, you know, our outfits were our leg warmers around our ankles. You know, you, you either wore your skirt over that or your, or your, or your workout pants or your mm -hmm. leotards. And so I would leave the leotard part on with jeans and my French jacket and I would braid my hair. <laughs> and I would, I would walk the village, New York, where I lived on 16th Street. I would walk around like that, dressing my in my tribal gear, and and being biracial. People just in the village, they never really thought, gave it two thoughts. But he would see me at different clubs, and then he kept approaching me about the concept. Mm -hmm. So then I finally said, okay, something must be up with this guy. And and basically, what that based in life tells you is that you have to be at the right place at the right time. Yes. And I said, you know, there's something to this concept that he's talking about. So I went to this tiny little office on the east side, and there I met his uh, a partner, the executive producer, and uh, the late Jacques Morelli told me about the concept where there was a, a, a drawing of myself in the middle, uh, in my gear, and then other characters um, the, like a like a cowboy, a construction worker, a soldier, and I really thought it was really stupid. I thought it was a stupid idea. <laughs> I didn't tell him that. And it changed your life. Before I was on the side with like other people of. Uh, uh, that were part of more of a prestigious uh, theatrical background. And, you know, I would see at parties, David Frost with, uh, who played Julia, what was her name? Diane Carroll, was they were an item, and, and other various people in the, in the more serious tone of the arts. So for me, you know, like my road would have gone one way or the other. You know, I thought, okay, let me give this 
disco thing up uh, because disco was hot anyway back in the day. Yes. And so the rest is history. And um, history. I think the movie that we did is now a cult, a cult movie. It is. It really is. So I was, Have you seen it? I, I, well, I, Years ago, <laughs> but oh, okay. the, uh, yeah. so I knew you. So now I want to go back yeah. and watch it. Now that I know you, so the so our 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 love for films and dance, dance yeah. dance moments in film. Can't stop the music was choreographed by Arlene Phillips. Now, if you remember back in those days, the Dr Pepper commercials, where it's just cut up in pieces and segments of dance, dance, dance. That's what she did and choreographed the musical number of the milkshake, where we were all in white. Oh and, wow! And, the, and my outfit, my costume was made by the late Theonia Aldridge, the Broadway produ uh, costumer, mm -hmm. uh, Tony Award-winning costume designer, and she made the, the white feathers and, in fact, the pink feathers. So yes, yeah, there you are. And yeah. That was heavy, heavy to it weighed a ton because that headdress, those are swan feathers. Mm. And so. And the moccasins, they had to spray them on me once I got in to mold my foot to them. Because, oh, wow. yeah, they were packed leather and they were really, okay. and they were wedgies. <laughs> they were a wedge shoe. They were not a flat <laughs> shoe. A flat moccasin. They gave, me a little, they gave me a little height, you know. Um, and ba Valerie Perlain was, uh, was in, in the movie. And it was directed by Nancy Walker. That was really strange. Um, yeah. that that situation. Well, um, actually, and Luke, I, Luke Jenner was in the movie. Right. Was that Caitlyn Jenner? Is exactly. That and I looked up uh, Nancy Walker, and just to find out a little bit more about her, the director of the film. She's actually from Philadelphia, my home city. And that movie, your movie with her, was her first film feature film debut. And prior to that, she had been acting and everything else. She played Rhoda's mom on the spinoff from the Mary Tyler Moore Show and all of this. And, you know, she went on to do other Broadway things, but Can't Stop the Music was her first feature. Right. And it, it was her first feature, and it was actually the movie that really killed the career of the group. But by then, the group had been so saturated in the media. We had been on every pop show, Tim Conway, you know, Seven American Bandstands. Uh, I don't know how many Merv Griffiths, like 22 times. You know, yeah. we were just on TV so much. That yeah. it was his overkill, and then yeah. the movie came in very late. Mm -hmm. And then, as as the movie was was being filmed in New York, then mm -hmm. that summer in Kaminsky Park, they were burning disco records because oh. the, the rock industry did not like the whole the whole situation with disco, and they thought it was an aberration, and they were throwing disco records in the field, burning them. Mm -hmm. You know, so the movie actually came out. During uh, 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 against all odds, against all odds of the, the, the crumbling of Casablanca Records when Donna Summer left and Georgia mm -hmm. Monroe, they sued the uh, Casablanca and Neil Bogart. So disco was crumbling. The label was like we got stuck with with the with the, the double the double album of the of the uh, of the film, and then the live and sleazy album, which was a live album and studio album. So we had two albums under the belt, and everything just like as we were flying here, and then we just started. Wow! The, but the beauty about the concept and the and the group was that. When we broke in Europe and, and became very successful, you know, uh, with the live show and, 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 and performing and the music was selling, we were able to dance in the, in the village before the group. Yes. Well, okay. And yeah, very careful. Okay. Of very careful to put a blanket, a, a native blanket on the car so I don't want to smudge it up. But um, we were lucky that we were able to, you know, access a lot of the countries around the world so that when disco died in the United States, we then kept disco going all around the world. Yeah. So we continued touring for many, many years after that. Yes. And you're so still- So the music was that one film uh, with, with, with music in it, you know, the musical number. But my top, I think my top five films as we were, as we were talking about, um, and I started doing several uh, research on several things. And then recently I saw Stormy Weather. Mm. And I remember, I remember that the Nicholas brothers, Sayer and Howard Nicholas, known as the Nicholas brothers, they were a pair of, of tag dancing 
fools. They were crazy. They were insane. They yeah. would jump and dance on tables, tap dancing, choreograph together. They would jump off and land in splits. Mm -hmm. So they were just amazing. And they were, you know, uh, a force to be reckoned with in mm -hmm. Hollywood at that time. And they were in many, many movies. Oh, yeah. So, so when I saw them as a kid, and not just recently watching Stormy Weather with Lena Horne in it and, and a few other people, um, other, other dancers like Gene Kelly and Fred Astaire, Fred Astaire thought that they were the world's greatest dancers. Mm -hmm. you know? And not to take anything away from Fred and Ginger, but in that, in that capacity, in that situation, the better dancer when you pair Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers, she was the better dancer because she danced in heels backwards. Okay, get you it. Get it? And, and, but, then of course, and then, of course, you also had, uh, what was Eleanor Powell, who yes. just did nothing but pirouettes, pirouettes, like spot on, an amazing dancer as well. Can we go back to Stormy Weather? I mean, the Nicholas Brothers, most, I mean, because, you know, film back then isn't what it is now with all the camera cuts, angle, blah, 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 blah. When they did their scenes, these are often, most often shot in one take. One or two takes, yep. Not you mess up, cut, take a break, take a one take. And usually those one takes is what ended up in the final film. And they're right there on that, on that still that, we, that you're showing right now. They are actually, from the stage, they jump on a piano. Yes. And that's the Cab Calloway Orchestra. Exactly. You better, come on now, talk about it. Cab oh, no, I mean, but, you know, it was like they would dance on any surface that they could get. You know, okay. Bill Robinson, Mojangles. Bill Robinson, another amazing dancer, who actually, did, I remember now I'm going through this film as to who was in it, and when I realized that he was, that he was in it, I also found, realized that he had also, in his later years, he danced with Shirley Temple mm -hmm. when they did that tap dance up the steps. Mm -hmm. So he was just another extraordinary actor um, yeah. and dancer, that in early films, you know, captivated not a, not only black audiences but white audiences as well, and they loved him. He was very, very, very well loved. And for Stormy Weather, we also have to call out, of course, Catherine Dunham. You know, uh, the the amazing the, cor the choreographer, <laughs> yeah, Catherine Dunham. Okay, just beautiful. Uh, what was one of the other ones we talked about? So you mentioned. Um, well, I, I, I then made mine then as my top five list. And then, you know, I, I, I remember my mother introducing me to West Side Story. Oh. With Steven Stottheim and Leonard Bernstein, the music and the lyrics by him. Every and um, the, 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 the amazing part of that a moment as a kid, watching the movie, because my mother, she loved, God bless her, rest her soul, kill her in peace. Kill her. And she loved, you know, she was fascinated by you know Marilyn Monroe and Elizabeth Taylor, but she loved the musicals. And when she said, we're going to watch this movie that's coming on television, and in fact, she took me to see West Side Story. Mm -hmm. When we were leaving the theater, she told me that the actress that was playing Maria, she wasn't Puerto Rican. And I kind of looked up at her like, oh, right. What is it, Amy? And she said, well, she's, you know, she's playing a, a Latina. Yeah. But yeah. she's not a Latina. Right. And, you know, I, I, you know, to me, it didn't matter one way or the other. That as, a, mm -hmm. as a child, children never really look at color. They mm -hmm. embrace everything in life. It's what they're taught later and mm -hmm. what to differentiate, differentiate. But the thing about the chemistry with with uh, the gentleman that played, uh, uh, what was it, the guy opposite her, Bernardo, Bernardo. was Joel Chakras. Right. And he was terrific. Now, well, his thing, scene, the dance scene with uh, Rita Moreno, America, I mean, everything. Well, well, Rita Moreno, that was the sister, uh, Maria's sister, Natalie uh, Wood's sister. Mm -hmm. That rooftop number everything. was brilliant. Yeah. Was brilliant. And Cheetah, you know, she actually came up at the same time as Cheetah Rivera. Right. But I think that Hollywood shows they that you know, the, the Hollywood machine, they always went for who's prettier, who's not, you or know. The only one. 
Oh, right. We only need one because, you know, Tina Rivera, her features are made. She's a gorgeous, gorgeous dancer, gorgeous woman. And she, her, 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 um, and in this movie, Sweet Charity, she had more of a leading role with Shirley oh, McCombie Kelly. and Paula Kelly. Paula Kelly. That, that rooftop number with the three of them, again, then the choreographer in, 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 um, uh, uh, Sweet Charity, I believe it was Bob Fosse. Yeah, Bob Fosse. Exactly, yes. Angela. Angela just said Cheetah and, Re Cheetah and Rita. Cheetah and Rita, yes. We're both gorgeous. Yeah, Bob Fosse was, it was a choreographer, but I mean, he had help with some of the, of the other numbers in that right. as well. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, all that jazz, which I absolutely love. Oh, and, come on. And there we go, and there we go. Again, I, re I remember uh, we both posted her picture on Instagram, on social media at the oh. same time. And oh. that's when we started talking about our love for not only this yes. woman who really just had Broadway in the palm of her hand, but she yes. her, she crossed over into film, which again, you, if you're lucky to get that, to cross over like that, and mm -hmm. she did, uh, she was just wonderful. So when the movie came out, I mean, look at her. Look at that pose with a broken wrist. I mean, it was, the dancing was spectacular. And she was a muse. His muse was Oh, she? absolutely. Absolutely. So, and he was married to, uh, what was his wife's name? Um, Gwen the Bearden. Dan Yankees. Who? Uh, Gwen Bearden. But they were still together. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Bob Fosse was a player. Okay, we all know what? that. <laughs> well, they, you know, I mean, he, he had a, 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 the brilliance of his mind when he was working. When I worked with other people that knew him and and worked with him, because I, you know, I I, I thought I was actually going to go and work in, in broad, on Broadway. Mm -hmm. And uh, 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 friends of mine, like Andre the Shields, that was yes. the, the original Wizard in the Wiz. Mm -hmm. His birthday's on my birthday, and uh, on the 12th. And um, he was basically telling me one time that Bob Fosse's mind was so amazing, but everything was just so, you know, it was one random, one, one, one crazy thought after another. But that was the brilliance of the mind of a, mm -hmm. of a man that thought on all those levels all together. Yeah, but just like but, someone just posted, he was also inspired by other black dancers. Absolutely. Yes, I mean, Catherine Dunham, Tally Beatty, you know, uh, Louis Johnson back in the, Alvin himself, I mean, they were all swirling around at the same time. But as you know, as we know, who gets the press? Who gets the, the push? So, right. yeah. And prior to and prior to roll back a little bit, uh, while I was with the dance company and I had those breaks, I would then take classes like with Lisa Bradley from Joffrey, mm. and uh, I would go to the Heinz Hatchet Dance School. Yeah. Black. I would just take. I I studied horn technique. Um, one great choreographer who many people may not know who he is is Louis Falco. Yeah. And, uh, and I wanted to dance and be in this company so bad, but you know that just that opportunity um, never uh, came to be. But we we met in the uh, early '80s, and uh, you know by then by then I was with the group um, with village people, and he just said, you know, it just wasn't your time to be with me. Mm -hmm. you know, he was just another a, another beautiful choreographer. Yeah, and, it was uh, interesting. The first my first year with Alvin Ailey. Um, cause he did several works for Alvin Ailey, but, um, uh, my first year in 1991, he had already passed on by then. But one of the first ballets that I originated a role in was Escargot by Louis Falco. And so I literally just being like, it's my first year and I'm in a new ballet already. I mean, it was incredible. Now, he choreographed that, didn't he? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And you worked with him? Was he with you? No, he had already passed on by then, I believe. Oh, but okay. Now, see, they took his, his work and Came in and, and taught it to us. And then reinterpreted, reimagined. Yeah. Was right. it reimagined or was it exactly the choreographer? Exactly. The choreography. choreography. Yeah. Basically, they call it like a, re, a restaging or a remounting of an, you know, a former work. But, right. Um, now, 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 because we were talking about The Wiz and yes. that, that went to, to films with 
with with Diana Ross. Uh, I, I felt that Stephanie should have been in the movie, but you caused quite the scandal when you guys brought Summer Stage, brought the Wiz back to the return on stage. Well, well, how many years ago was that? Was it a scandal? What is this? Scandal. It was a scandal because it was just insane because the one that got all the press was Andre because he slipped <laughs> back into that white that white jumpsuit bell bottom with the white cake and he came out so you wanted to see the wizard. Andre and, was snatched. And he, the, me, the, like, the media, like newspapers and magazines and the news, they just broke. They're like he, he broke like everything yeah. stopped. Who was on Broadway, yeah. and then the movie gets translated to film, the musical, and then he comes back, and, and no one had seen him in a while. He had been, like, really tucked away, and then he made that appearance on the summer stage when they did yeah. The Wiz, and um, everybody just kept saying... This yeah. man that is got slipped back in with that high school waistline. Okay. He's going to jump suit again. Well... So just to give you a little bit of context, so if you're just joining us, thank you again. We had an earlier technical craziness, but here we are. It was going great. But I'm with the great Felipe Rose, and we're talking um, music and dance and musical movie musicals and great dance scenes. And we just got to The Wiz. And as we know, The Wiz, the movie, was a completely different beast than the actual musical on Broadway with Diana Ross in the movie and everything else. And the choreographer for the movie, actually, was the great Louis Johnson, who we just lost this past year at 90 years old. I know. Another I great saw that. I but the original choreographer, as we know, of the Wiz was the incredible my friend George Faison, who says hello to you, Felipe. Love and him. And actually, so just a little side note for promotion. I just inter I interviewed George Faison this past summer on the 45th anniversary of the show. And we talked about our production in Central Park back in 2015, when it was the 40th anniversary, and we oh. had D.D. Bridgewater, we had Felicia Rashad. I mean, it really was one of the, the most triumphant moments of my time as a curator. And it it was, was because I was touring and I read about it. I read about it and, and, I, and I, I, I spoke to a few friends that, that attended uh, Summer Stage to catch that performance. Yeah, it was really something else. But as we know, the movie The Wiz, Brand New Day, those scenes were unbelievable. The crowd, Michael Jackson, first of all. First of all, Michael Jackson, what an amazing dancer. What an amazing dancer. As yeah, we worked, we worked together. They actually have a crazy photo of all of us with Jane Fonda, Valerie Perrine, you know, all of us and Michael. And we, we did a, a concert for Jane Fonda at the time when she was married to Tom Hayden. Mm. And... Um, he had just that really sweet, low voice, very <laughs> quiet. And, yeah. he, and it took me a while to come out of the dressing room while everyone's waiting for this crazy looking photo that where like, yeah. every now and then pops up like a motley yeah. cool photograph. <laughs> and when I, I walked into the room, everyone looked at me and I was like, headdress on and all that. And he said, You're You're so doing tall. it. Just doing said, it. You're so tall. I said, No, this is height. This is nothing but feathers. Let's do a damn picture. Yes. <laughs> it was so very sweet. Going, it was going back a little bit further, we talked about, of course, one of my favorite film dancers, who I grew, also grew up watching, of course, you know, Gene Kelly. You know, come on. Dancing well, in the Rain. Dancing in the Rain. That was another number that, uh, to, to, when, they shot, when they shot that dance number, that was pretty, like, straight through. Yeah. They didn't they cut that. It. Right. They didn't cut that. That was like an action. And he went down that street with the rain and he jumped on that lamppost. He jumped over the fire hydrant. He jumped in and out off the sidewalk. I mean, as a kid, I would watch the film when every time it would come on TV and I would stand in front of the television yeah. and I would imitate the dance steps. And mm -hmm. my mother would say, get out of the way. I want to <laughs> see this. But, you know, if you love dance when, when you're young as a kid, it just will never go away. But do you think there's a correlation here, too, when we talk about the fact that, oh, wait, said, they said it was one take and he was sick with a cold and still killed it. Exactly. I mean, thank you. Yeah, that's what I heard. I heard, I heard. I heard something like that, that he but was. Think about, think about what we just said about Gene Kelly, all of these 
amazing legends, the Nicholas brothers, getting this in there in one take. And maybe they had to do it multiple takes, but all the way through. And when I think about, you know, old albums, old music stars, recording stars, there wasn't cut and paste, baby. You got it in one take or you didn't get there was, it. There was no auto tune. You had to get, that, get those notes right. What key are we in? Let's go over this. Ready? Five, six, seven, eight, and we do it like this, and we harmonize. <laughs> did it twice. Let's go in. Sounds good. Let's get it before someone goes off pitch or whatever. And so, and this, what is this? This is all awesome. at. At This was like some fantasy moment that he had with Sid Sharif. You can't see her there. Oh, it's too small. But she was another amazing dancer, Sid Sharif. Oh my. Oh, goodness. Sid Sharif. Jesus Christ. Um, yeah. And Leslie Caron, I mean, I, uh, American in Paris. I mean, just all these divas. But you mentioned the studio earlier. That's can we, we're gonna move forward a little bit now. Um, White Knights. Can we talk about White Knights? Okay, so White Knights. That's another one of my favorite films because it has the great uh, Mikhail Baryshnikov, yes. and yet another great um, American dancer, uh, Jeff. Uh, uh, Gregory Hines, another amazing tap dancer, tap dancer that defined gravity. And the two, well, they were the, and for the 70s, they were the two greatest male dancers of the late 20th century on that same floor when they were, when, when they were filming that. And, you know, they were high powered, high kicking, you know, um, they, they, they did ballet tap and jazz all all in, 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 in one number yes and uh, and the thing about the film was that it, they were spies you know they mm -hmm. were like the, what I love about musicals and when films like that that either the writing or the dialogue or where's the storyline going it doesn't look like it's going anywhere let's just throw a musical number <laughs> let's just throw a musical number in there yeah and, and don't forget like the amazing isabella rossellini was in this i mean it was just such a great and i believe that he was a, a police officer who gregory i'd have, have, have to watch it again um you know um but, but, but the thing is that when you go back to those two, um, they, and in fact, there was talk of them being to, uh, being put back together to, well, to work and continue doing more uh, movies together. Really? But the, 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 again, the opportunity never came back or probably the, the right script didn't come along. But there are two men dancing together. They, people, you know, I heard that the, the energy on, on the stage just left people that when they caught, people were just still just sitting there, just watching them, you know, out of breath, because because they dance hard. Oh, yeah. They were just doing light dancing, like Curtis Thayer and Gene Kelly, because Gene was very, Gene was very graceful mm -hmm. as well, you know, mm -hmm. especially in American in Paris. So, mm -hmm. you know, that was one of the most, one of my favorite movies, with two male dancers, mm -hmm. which I absolutely love. Mm -hmm. and, uh, well, you know, Barishnikov, you know, he was I'm such a big, star, a big star. And, you know, he really, once he landed here in America, he really opened himself up to so much besides doing The Turning Point, that other film, great film by Herbert Herbert Ross, I think. Herbert um, Ross with, with Anne, ba Anne Bancroft. Oh, was playing. When they walked out of reconsider, they slapped the hell out of each other. <laughs> I forgot that they were. Oh, that was good. But, okay, so going back on that, though, his work with Alvin Ailey was amazing because if for, for those of you that don't know, The Turning Point, I think that was in the late 70s as well, but there's a scene in the movie where the ingenue... Was it the 80s? Maybe 80s? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Leslie, Leslie Brown plays the young baby ballerina, and there is a scene that, you know, they're working on a solo for her and it's choreographed by, you know, some young diva in the, in the quote unquote dance company, which I think was supposed to replicate American Ballet Theater. But the solo that she actually ends up doing at the end of the movie is Vortex from Alvin Ailey's The River, right? And so this is all that backstory. So Alvin Ailey and Marisha Koff's, you know, journey together continue because he ended up subsequently 
choreographing a tour de force celebratory duet for Marisha Koff, Mikhail, and Judith Jamison, which was Pot oh, of Doom. Please, a, a national treasure. Judith, same Judith. Okay, Ms. Judith. I saw her at a cocktail party back in the day, and George Faison was there with Valerie, Valerie Simpson and Nick and, Nick and Val and Roberta Flack, a lot of people, and I, I so much wanted to walk across the room to just kiss her hand, but I was... Uh -huh. I, you know, and, and that's what happens when I see other celebrities. I don't, and back then, I would not, I just didn't want to interrupt. I, it was like she would float. Some people walk. Yeah. Then Judith just glides across. You know. <laughs> she does, she does. Um, Carmen um, de, de, de la Oh, oh, the love a lot. And they're all just so gracious and wonderful people. I mean, when you think of divas, I don't think of divas as like these bitchy, horrible people that you don't want to ever be around. When I think of divas, I think of legends that are so encompassing and gracious and have a larger than life humanity and spirit. Not somebody that's going to like beat you down, talk about you, kick you to the curb. That to me is not a diva. Well, that's not, I don't see, no. yeah, I don't see that the definition of diva the way it's used around today, I don't really, I don't really even t think about it. It doesn't equate. There's nothing in my mind that, that is neither good or bad because mm -hmm. the diva that I remember that my mother loved was Maria Callas. Mm -hmm. And that was, that's where the word came from, from yeah. her. They called her the diva. Yeah. You know, and, and so diva, when they say that today and they say it, they do say it in a negative connotation and i don't really you know because you know i don't i would never dare say anything about beyonce on on on, on, uh, on social media because that, that that beehive will come and sting, sting me to the point <laughs> sting me away you know that they, uh, there are no there are no jokes but there are divas like mariah carries a diva you know and they, but, but people use it so loosely but that was really an operatic uh term that was used back then yeah. but the, the great female dancers like dame judith and carmen that mm -hmm. you know and even paula kelly because paula kelly she was a threat in her okay. back in the day yeah. And Chita Rivera, Chita Rivera, I've seen her in several musical numbers of, of our plays on on Broadway. Kiss of the Spider Woman, she, I think, Ooh. she was in that. Yes. Yes. And Chita, and then, Chita is and still then, up there dancing and performing, okay? Yeah, and I saw her then, I went to see her in the rink with uh, Liza Minnelli, and that's another hoof, you know, hard dancing diva. Cabaret. That's another young, you know, young, you know, for her time. And I believe that Cabaret, who was the choreographer in that? Bob Fosse. But. Yeah, baby. You know, that number with the chair. And that's where when you see after that, there are many other female singers that they do the chair routine and the chair number and all that. And it always takes me back to that number that she did on the stage with the mm -hmm. chair because yeah. there was nothing like it. I mean, she was stunning. She was amazing at that. Yeah. And so these weren't particularly, you know, movie musicals in terms of they were singing or anything, but I want to come a little bit more to the to the future now with, um, oh, that's so tiny. You can't really see it, but okay, Dirty Dancing. I mean... Jennifer Grey, okay, beautiful, whatever. But Patrick Swayze, let's be clear. Patrick Swayze was a trained ballet dancer. Be Train clear. Yes. The be late, clear about it. The late, beautiful yes. Patrick Swayze. And a very sweet guy. Uh, we met him in Los Angeles. Uh, I forget what we were doing. And we met him. And, and just gracious. Yes. Very, very gracious. And that that when that movie came out, I mean, I, and I'm still very good friends with Pran Frankie Previtt. He mm -hmm. lives down there. Frankie won an Oscar for uh, The Time of My Life. He wrote that oh, song. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, you know, like, every time I see him, it's interesting. I think of the movie. Yeah, and you have to, if yeah. you know him, if you know him. But right. that, that scene was uh, quite spectacular. 
um, she literally ran down that aisle. And they said they, they, they only did three takes. Really? So told me, Frankie told me they only did three takes, but she did, you know, they were dry runs and they were ready now to shoot. And that was the third time. And she threw herself up in Damn. the air and he caught her. Oh, and wow. Know, he held her. But yeah. the thing is that when you're doing that type of dancing and with a partner dancing, the male's diaphragm has to be solid. Oh, yeah. You can have, you know, your, your stomach muscles and diaphragm. Yes. Has oh. to be tight, exactly. So tight. Okay, and just for fun, just for my own little fun moments in movies. Um, and these are these are these are more fun than anything. But like, oh, can you see this? Kids and play house party. The <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't believe I was looking at the list of movies and I saw that. And I, you know, honestly, I really that's the set that they do in the came I back on TikTok. The but that step that they do with the knee to the knee and double I knee, that, that came back on TikTok big time when every, everyone was in lockdown. I mean, social dance is how, you know, cultures, I mean, from, from BC era, dance is how people communicate it. This is how families come together. This is how people celebrate. Dance, you don't have to say nothing. You ain't got to say nothing. You're just going to move together. Every every Madea movie, they always got to do uh, the uh, the electric slide. This? Thank you. you know, I, I'm going to parties. I'm going to parties. I will admit, I testify yeah. that, you know, they will play something and I get up there and I start the electric <laughs> slide. And, and people just jump in. And next thing you know, it's like, and no one's sitting down. Everybody, yes. and, that, and those types of dances there where people join together, yes. like even YMCA, as silly as that looks. Um, and the song actually, uh, this mm -hmm. early, this mm -hmm. early last, early in 2020, right before COVID happened, uh, YMCA was inducted into the Library of Congress. Mm -hmm. uh, forever. And just like this, dance and the electric slide and films, you know, and, and when you say these, the numbers that people can do together, they, they, they stand the test of time. Yes, absolutely. And so I got one for you. Hold on, kids. I got um, one last one for me, for me, but okay. How about school day, school days? Okay, <laughs> Spike Lee, school days, honey. Good hair. What was that, see? So this yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, I was, remember that. I enjoyed that as well. Yes. I enjoy that as well. And then, of course, a very good friend of mine, and we're still friends to this very day, Denny Terrio, okay. with Saturday Night Fever. Yes. Oh, wait. So and, speaking of Saturday and then, that movie came out in 1977 when the group came out. So <laughs> imagine we came out late going into disco. Yes. Okay. Right. That movie came out in 1977. Um, and basically, John Travolta, that, that, that number, first of all, the movie opens and he's walking down the street okay. with Stan Alive and he's holding a, paint, a can of paint. He's walking down with his beautiful yes. jacket and pants and little jacket and his shoes and he's doing that scrub. That, that, that's forever etched right. in our minds. And even the dance in the club. Yeah. And then when you really think about the storyline, it was a bit dark, you know, because there was like, you know, the situation with a the girl was raped in the car and all that. So, you know, it wasn't really all that lighthearted. They, yeah. they, had, they had a dark moment to it. Right. But, but but that's, I think, that's what made it really plausibly real because stuff like that was really going on yeah. in clubs after hours. Right. And then, you wait know? a minute. So then, so there was Saturday Night Fever. But then, wait, okay. And then he snatched it up for staying alive, honey. He was like, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> And now that's when I believe that's now that's when I, I, I he truly became the dancer. Yeah. And uh, no, but the body, like he worked really hard for that. Mm -hmm. He did like his bronze jetés, <laughs> you know. I, I I was I was known in the group for my uh my 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 double and triple pirouettes yes. going into, going into a full split. I think you saw yeah. some of that. Yeah, when yeah. I was when I was working on stage with the guys, but yeah. with this with John, this was amazing to just mm -hmm. watch him do that. And I believe the actress that danced with him was Cynthia Rhodes. 
Cynthia Rose was one, but also you can't really see her because I'm in the way. But Finola Hughes was the diva in the red. I'll make it small. Oh, right. But she okay. A, um, she's an actress. She was also um, on like soap operas, like All My Children, I think, and uh, General Hospital. Yes, talk about, let's talk about Tap, the movie, Sammy Davis. I mean, there's so many, you know, amazing, amazing artists. Um, and even though Jennifer Beals actually wasn't the dancer in Flashdance, her body double and amazing dancer was the French dancer, Marine Jahan. Marine, yes, yes. Okay, and Marine, Miss Marine, honey, did all the turns and the leaps and the splits. But this movie was so, influ so influential to so many people. That water scene in the club. It, it defined the era back then, you yeah. know, and, and that's what dancers would wear with their leotards and the cut down I, I, sweatshirt. It was a little bit today, but it didn't come Very out. Very damaging. Very damaging. Well, you know, I know that we don't have a lot of time left, but I think that this is a great way to kick off your second season uh, with to go back through your roster and bring everyone back. And then each person that you interview, like myself, you will get, you know, what's their favorite movie? Because, I mean, and with dance in films, because there are so many so many through the decades that it is just going to be a joy to watch your show and to then go down memory lane with this. Yeah. Oh, but wait a minute. Wait, wait. I just rewatched this on Christmas Eve night, which was, uh, okay, coming to America, honey. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I saw it. That, Paula Abdul and that, that choreography was everything. That's not Paula. No, no, that's not Paula Abdul, but she choreographed this scene. She choreographed that because when they come down, Ooh. And then like, do, 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 do. Okay. you know, she's so queen. You come down there, full splits and everything. It was like, oh my god, this was something. Now, I did not wait do, for part two. Then they do a big dance number and yeah. Michael Jackson. Remember the time? Remember the time? And somebody else posted Thriller. Thriller, absolutely. Oh, well. Thriller was like, iconic. I can't touch. Can't can't touch it. It was <laughs> also. It was also. MTV, it was actually the premiere was was worldwide. It was mm -hmm. epic because I remember rushing to my half sister's house on the yeah. east side and she was throwing a big party because mm -hmm. they were debuting on MTV the 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 video, which yes. was like, you know one of the longest videos, what like twenty minutes or something. It was long, yeah. And you know, I kept I kept calling um uh, downtown Julie Brown, Wubba Wubba Wubba, and we're yeah. still very good friends. Yeah. And she's on Sirius XM 90s on 90s, but she films it from her home in Italy. Mm -hmm. um, um, she tapes it. But the thing is, she kept saying, I'm on my way, I'm on my way. And it was like back then we had beepers. And, you know, um, and so I remember that just, you know, everyone had to hush because. Thriller came on, and it was like, we had never seen, I had never seen anything like it. It was just yeah. sensational. And yeah. once again, Michael, uh, for, being, uh, 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 for being a vocalist, he never did take any dance lessons. Mm -mm. He was a natural. He was a natural. And that's a gift. Yes. That's that a gift. Thriller was Michael Peters' choreography. I know bad one. Michael Peters. You know, and another oh. great choreographer that we must remember um, before we leave tonight, uh, with Chorus Line is Michael Bennett. Yes, absolutely. Because Chorus Line really changed Broadway mm -hmm. um, in, the, in the capacity of, you know, the story of a gypsy. The a gypsy. story the story of what a dancer's life is like. Mm -hmm. When I saw that, I was in love with with the arts and with dance more than ever. Oh my you God, me too. Me too. Yeah. So, the, so, you know, I'm just really blessed and honored that I had that, like yourself, that we had that opportunity in life to really go and, and make our mark in that young time in our lives. Right. Because you'll never get that back. You no. know, that's what I was saying earlier. If you let go of that opportunity and you don't just grab, hitch onto that star and you say, oh, I'll do it next time. No. You know, it, it'll never happen. I mean, I think this year, I mean, that, again, 
keeping it light and joyful and, and, and in the spirit of all of this, if this year has taught us nothing else, it is to grab on to your passion and run with it. We, we don't have time. We don't have time. We don't have time. time. And while we have been talking about, you know, Broadway and, uh, you know, I, I made a few donations to Broadway Cares and what have you, just the fact that the, the, the segment of this industry was completely just forgotten. Yeah. And they, all of these people that work like Broadway, all the businesses, everything like that whole situation is completely gone. Mm -hmm. The shows that were going to open, the shows that were opening and had to close, the yeah. shows that were already long running, you know, because if you know more or less you get a, you're, you're in, a, in, a, in a show and you kind of know, okay, this like we're taking this as long as they could go and when it's time to start getting ready to look for the next job and and set up the next audition, but yeah. no one had time. Yeah. No one had time. Yeah. And, and when you talk about, you know, that th it's not just the, the the actors and the singers and the orchestra and musicians, but the people in the theater, even the people, just to get the program and hand it to you and have someone walk into your seat. Right. right? Like, where does that happen, you know? Right. And so, so that's gone. Yeah. The, those people at the box office, that whole situation, it is just so sad. And and I know that I know that Broadway will come back. And I and I and I made of the uh, I promised uh, my friend Keith Price that when Broadway opens up, I told him you find you find a show and I will buy the tickets and we will be going. And he yes. going. you know he was like he was like. <laughs> because you know, I want that. That's going to be the first thing I want to support. Me too, absolutely. Live and finally, and finally get to the summer stage. I know because I did receive many of your invitations, but I was touring. Yeah, yeah. We'll get there. I mean, it's still well, wait and see. We got to see what's happening with the treatments, the cases, you know, all of it, so. Yeah, and so once again, Joe, Danny, I just want to say to you that, you know, uh, not because I was able to watch every Friday, but there were some Fridays when I did, but now that it's on YouTube, like I saved the one with you and George Fazoff, yes. you know, I believe that, you know, that what you created, and I feel that what you created just because you are figuring yourself out while the situation was going down. And what did, what were you gonna do? I had just retired. I mean, I yeah. went into retirement. And even though I put out a single in 218 and won my fifth Native American Music Award, and then was invited to do the Ultimate Disco Cruise in yeah. February of 2020, when I returned, I said, you know what, I think, I think I'm, gonna, I'm gonna make my show look bigger, longer, and I'm gonna get back to work. And yes. then the, the pandemic happened. Oh. So then I was at home going, okay, well, uh, I can just stay in re in retirement. But one in the arts never retires. No, you have that tickle and that passion. Mm -hmm. So I am working on various things at home and various projects that are in development. But because of where I am in life, I'm now more pragmatic about it. Sure. Because when I execute, it's going to be flawless. I'm going to be in the recording studio on my birthday. What a great way to celebrate my birthday. Yes. So in the recording studio with two of my favorite producers and songwriters. And so I just want to say to you again that what you created with this live stream on Instagram, it's just great where you just keep the community alive. You just keep everyone that that lives this world, that they're there. They're, they're there, they're being talked about, and that the dance it's still alive because everyone yeah. has been dancing at home. Okay. In their living rooms, <laughs> in their bedrooms, in their kitchens. Okay. You're one that I've seen you just when there was no show. You're one that you just have your mask on at home, playing to some, you know, some some fabulous love uh, song, and you're having your drink, or you're just like, you're jamming, <laughs> and I'm like looking, going, okay, she is. Just having a good time. Yes. Now, now, to, now to capsulate and end this, because I, I was, I was thinking about because of what happened on Wednesday. I was like saying, so what songs were popular when I was growing up? Mm -hmm. And I started looking around, and I have to laugh in a way 
because it's ironic that Gil Scott Harris song, The Revolution Will Not Be Televised. Uh, <laughs> right. Uh, excuse me, it was. Well, let's be clear, that wasn't a revolution. No, but... no, no. But I mean, just the I fact that just the fact that the song was recorded at a time where where there was a lot of you know uh, you know the, the problems that the, the 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 cultural and and problems that were happening in the ghetto and he yeah. was a, a, a really amazing songwriter that he wrote about the plight okay. of, of yeah uh, that he wrote in the bottle yeah and, you know oh, I mean yeah. he he was a ama an amazing songwriter but I mean I just said okay I gotta I have to find a song. So I posted it briefly. I posted it briefly on Facebook, and a friend of mine, this brother, he jumped on and he said, "Felipe, you're incorrigible." Oh, you <laughs> he know. He said, "I don't know. I don't know if I want to see hear this song right now." So I took it. Down. Yes, I, I had to down. meet um, Gil Scott Heron once before he passed. He played. He came back and played Summer Stage. I can't recall what year that was right now, but. It was such an amazing show. He did two shows with us that year. I want to say 2013. Maybe I could be wrong with date. But he did um, a show with us in Harlem and also in Central Park. And it was just unbelievable. I, for I forgot one, one other movie that we talked about, which was Funny Lady. Oh. And the musical number Happy Days, where the Alvin Ailey Company comes up the staircase. Yes. With these like sinewy hard bodies. <laughs> and she had the skull cap, the skull cap, beaded skull cap with this dress where she looks half naked. Oh. And I can find that number. It's not on YouTube. I mean, you hear the song, you only see four shots. Um, yeah. But the Alvin Ailey Company was in that film. They yeah. danced that number with her. Yeah. yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Amazing. So any any last thoughts? Any Any ways we can support you as we go forward into this new year? Well, you know, I, I just think that um, I will make several announcements. I'm right now putting fine tuning, um, fine tuning uh, my podcast show. And we just finished the logo and what have you and the music. Mm -hmm. And now I just got to script the five first episodes so I can do them. I always stay five ahead. And mm -hmm. the first five will be uh, the Disco Chronicles. And yeah. every five following Felipe and the podcast. And every five shows, it'll be something else that I'm going to talk about. But I'm going to keep it light, refreshing, yeah. uh, you know, pop culture, music. And, of course, what I love to do is cook and food. So I'm still working on my cooking show, No Feathers in the Kitchen. The <laughs> <pilot is> my... <laughs> I love that. I love that. Yeah. And so I'm just right now, you know, as you know very well that when all of this started, I was able to... I was in the position to help a lot of friends uh, yeah. with food and small donations and what have you when all of this started in March, April, and May and what have you. But um, you can only do but so much. Mm -hmm. And then the rest is support, you know, by just watching, you yeah. know, a small donation even. And I believe that we made the, uh, the what was it, the dancers? The oh, the NYC. The NYC, you know, that's, that's on my website. Yeah. So, so, you know, the thing is, again, when we did, when they just had uh, with Tina Fey on uh, one night on Broadway, you know, I mean, it wasn't a lot of money, but I made another small donation. My mm -hmm. my bookkeeper <laughs> sent me an email and said, I'm, I'm doing your books for, the, for these last three months. I think you need to stop giving money away, Felipe. <laughs> but the thing is, but the thing is that I don't look at it if it's not, because I'm not going out and spending it right. by going out and dining on it. So if I've got it to give, then I do. And I just say, well, I, I'm not doing thousands and thousands of dollars, mm -hmm. but you're doing what you can. Yes. And, I just, and I did some volunteer work. So no, what I need is just gratitude. I'm in, I'm gr in gratitude. And what do I need? I just need nothing but love. That's you right. know? And, and I know that when I get ready to put stuff out, I know that my fans and friends on social media will jump out to support. Absolutely. And, you know, in order to get, you have to give. And okay. so by giving and putting it out into the universe, it comes back to you the way it's come back to you. Amen. You know, and, and like three months into your into this show, 
you 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 post it i just hired myself <laughs> and i said what and you said yes i i just hired myself with with <laughs> And I thought, well, that's that's a, just a great attitude to just say, you know, I got this. I'm going to be okay. Yeah. And they got me through the year. Yes. Yes. And I'll tell you that the year, and I think many of you out there will know know this to be true, that the year, even though we were in, in and out of lockdown and this and that, the year flew. It did. It, it did. really did. Yeah. And, and it's not like any of us were really moving around, going anywhere. I haven't traveled in a year. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm getting in, in March. I'm gonna bust out. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get on a plane with a hazmat suit on. <laughs> I'm going somewhere. No, that's right. <laughs> so, Ben, here's to you, and thank you for having me. Oh, with you. Right. And to everyone out there listening and watching, you know, be safe. Wear your mask. Wash your hands. You know, uh, vaccines are here. It's just a matter of time till everyone gets them, and you know, and and, and hopefully this thing can burn itself away. Uh. But but take every opportunity to be joyful, be blessed, be happy. That's all yeah. we have to do right now. Absolutely. Well, I just want to say to you, thank you for coming back to my living room, Felipe. Thank you for all our conversations. More to come. Again, happy birthday to you. Tuesday you. Is birthday, guys. And again, thank you for your patience with the earlier technical drama. And also, just want to shout out thanks to people from the first bunch of shows I've done who have actually donated money to some of the artists and, and people that I've had on. I'm going to shout out Kate Hiltz. Because, yes. You know, and so just thank you. She has an amazing restaurant in Philly called The Tasty. So go visit her. Yeah, I know it. I know it. And so, anyway, love you. This is our first show. I'm Jennifer Walker and my, and my new producer, Tyler uh, Zaffred. Zaffred is, is, I think, probably watching. Mm -hmm. But to everyone that supports Danny G Live, I think it's just a, a beautiful show. It's so full of love and light. And it's just joyful like you. Oh, thanks. Thank you. I'm trying, baby. You know, I've, so much has been given to me. I'm not rich, but I'm rich in love and spirit and friendships and family. And so there it is. <laughs> there it is, you know, yeah. And the love comes from where you can get it. And you have lots of it, lots of it. I do. I do. So I love you. I'm going to let you, you go. Too. I'm going to get on with my Friday night. Thank you all for tuning in. My guest next week, I'm super excited, is a tour, tour de force, fierce female woman, Goddess Jessica Care Moore. Oh. Okay, she is a, a divine inspiration being. She, is. she was one of the first multiple winners on the Apollo Amateur Night for her poetry. For her yeah. poetry. So she's my guest next weekend, next Friday, which is actually the birthday of Martin Luther King Jr. No, we'll see. Yeah, will she actually be uh, jumping in with some of her favorite films? She no, she this is all about just you know her 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 book her books, uh, her publishing company, and you know, so every Friday will be something a little mix of something different, but um, as I always do, but she's just a force of nature, Jessica Care Moore. So, more to come, more guests. Thank you for tuning in. If you missed any part of it, it'll be on my YouTube channel within the next 24 hours, Danny GTV, and it'll also be here on IGTV. I'll be able to upload the interview. And thank you, Felipe. Happy birthday. <laughs> love you guys. Happy New Year, everyone. Stay safe and stay healthy and blessed. I love you. Bye-bye. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my God. The great Felipe Rose. So thank you all again for joining. What a man. What a friend. Um, so please support him. Follow him. Felipe Rose Official. I believe it's his new Instagram account and he has some new music coming up. So that's it. My first show back in 2021 and give yourselves, give yourselves some love this weekend. Um, this week was, was really crazy, but we are moving forward. Okay. We got Georgia. We got Georgia. <laughs> so have a great weekend and I will see you next Friday with Jessica Caremore. Mwah. Yeah. <laughs>